All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Monday night Team Passion Zoom call. Really excited to share with you guys tonight. Um, what I did is I had, I asked in my, my team cup is pretty much made of all brand new coaches or coaches who have been like hanging out, but not really dove into the business yet. They've just been kind of dab, like dipping their toes in a little bit. So what I did is um, about a week ago, I asked them, you know, what are your challenges that you're facing right now? Like what are your biggest struggles and challenges? And I got about eight things. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm all nasally and like coughing and I sound wonderful. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I have a headache from like crying for four days. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to share, I'm going to kind of read what these challenges are and these struggles, and then I'm going to open it up for you guys to actually answer these questions for these new coaches. So this is going to be a call that I think is going to be super valuable for, this is like one that is going to live on. Um, I imagine that this be a call that you send many of your new coaches over and over again. And if this is super successful and we didn't quite answer all of the challenges, we can maybe even do another one. So let's kind of get into it and just, and just kind of get started right away. So one of the first, and I of course have an answer to all of these, but I'm going to zip it tonight. And I'm going to allow um, other perspectives to come in because I think that that is super helpful. And then if I think if anything was missed, I'll, of course, hop in. All right. So are we ready? All right. So um, so if you want to speak up and kind of you're like, oh, I totally felt this way, too. And here is how. So we're going to use that feel, felt, found type thing tonight. Right. I feel the same way, too you know, or I felt the same way too, but in here is I found that and kind of offer up your solution when you felt this way, what you did about it. Okay. So the first one is finding the time to work this business along, alongside a full-time job and balancing family time. And this one in particular, I said family time, but this one in particular doesn't have children, so it's husband time. So the husband's demanding a lot of her attention. And I didn't have this. Maybe Mark, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I should have. No. But he, um, we, what we did is we had a designated Friday night. Friday night, all the electronics were shut off, and it was date night, and we had no money, so it was date night on the couch. Um, so he was fine with me working the rest of the week. We both gave up TV and we both, you know, just he took care of the kids and I worked every night. And then Friday nights were our designated time. And he knew it needed to happen this way in order for us to grow this business. So that's my take on the, on the family time piece. So anybody um, out there that is balancing a full-time job and a needy spouse. <laughs> or vice versa, that wants to speak up on this. Cheryl or Mary? Oh, I'm going to call people out if you don't stop talking. Yes. <laughs> Who do we have? I'll share. Oh, Amy, thank you. Yes. All right. Don't have a full-time job, but I do have a husband. And um, it was super important for me to find this balance because, um, as some of you know, we were separated, gosh, it's been two years now, ago. Um, and so it became really important for us to figure out how I can balance our time together and the time that I wanted to put into my business so that... You know, if we were watching TV and my phone was going off or I was mes messaging somebody that it just really takes communication. So you can either put definite business hours aside where you say you talk to your spouse and say, this is when I'm going to be working and this is when I'm going to be present with you, but you can't do both. So um, you're not fully present at either one of those things if you're trying to do both. 
So I'd say talk to your spouse, decide what's going to be, you know, the times that you're going to spend together and be fully present with him or her. And when you're working, they also understand that you need to be fully present doing what you're doing with work. And I have found that that has worked. And then if, if anything happens, like, you know, we'll have time together and, you know, I'll get a message. Hey, I'm ready to get started. Well, mm, I'm going to sign you up. <laughs> so, you know, I just, you know, tell them, I'll say, hey, you know, Hey, I've got somebody that I want to talk to for about 10 or 15 minutes. Is that okay? And get, you know, his consent and then go ahead and put that time in and then be fully present when I get back. And he understands and he's totally with me as far as trying to build this business and making this work. So he's supportive there. And that might be another good thing for you to do is to talk to your spouse about why you're doing this, the importance of this business, why it means so much to you and ask that they be there to support you while you're finding your way. Mm, that's big because I think that's one thing that isn't done. I don't think we communicate how important this business is to us. And they just think we're playing on Facebook and they, they like literally think you're playing angry birds or whatever those Facebook games. I don't even know what the games. <laughs> so like that's, I think that's huge. I think honestly, they think it's just a hobby or it's just a game or this is just going to be something quick. Like I don't think they realize how serious you are. So yeah, that's big. I know for me, um, in the beginning and I was always on my phone that started to become an issue. So I think really communicating like, okay, you know, this is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it and being consistent in what you're actually doing. Cause I mean, consistency speaks for everything. You, you know, no one's going to take you seriously unless you, you know, are really consistent at something. So I think when Sean started seeing that, how consistent I was and that I wasn't messing around anymore and that I wasn't going to give it up, then he was like, okay, and like totally, you know, joined me really. I can speak um, for yeah. myself that when I was working a full time job, I was gone 11 hours a day. So with two small kids and a husband, it's, it's tough, but I wanted it bad enough. So I would get up early in the morning by five o'clock so I could get my workout in while everybody's still asleep get ready for work. And for me, I was lucky because I would take a train. Well, not really lucky, but I had to take a train. So I would do my personal development on the train. I would do my posts on the train. And then when I got to work during my breaks at work, I would do beach body work. So I would squeeze it in if in the hour or your lunch hour or your 15 minutes, whatever break, I would do it then. Then I'm again on the train. I do more follow-ups, more invites, and then I'd come home and I'd make sure that I had family time. So as soon as I got home, we'd have dinner together. We'd put the kids together and then I'm back at it again. So after like 9, 30, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, sometimes my kids didn't go to sleep until late. As some of you know, my kids don't sleep, but I wanted it bad enough. And so I would work at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. So you just have to make that time. But you also have to have like a set schedule of when you spend quality time with your husband, your kids, or whoever. Good. Awesome. Okay, this is a big one that we hear a lot. And we'll address this in the sneak peek starting tomorrow because we do hear this one a lot. Being, having to be in shape before you start sharing. So... You know, did anyone have that feeling of, well, I'm not fit enough, so who am I to coach anyone? And how did you overcome that? Don't be shy. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, I honestly didn't ever feel this way <laughs> because I, I, you guys know my story. I was so desperate. I couldn't give two craps what anyone thought because I was drowning. We had, we didn't have money for food almost like it was that bad. So I didn't have time to worry about it. I had people, you know, I had personal trainers say to me, you know, like, what are you doing? Like, you don't even know what you're doing. Like in private message me and I just unfriended them and just moved on. Um, you know, I, 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 did, I have always said that this business, you're relatable 
to your lifers based on who you are. So it doesn't even matter. Um, you know, Danielle Natoni fit and funky has always been, you know, super, super fit. She, I think she came out of the womb with a six pack. I'm pretty sure she did. So she like doesn't have a before and after at all. And so everybody, you know, I was like, Oh, so everybody respects her, blah, blah, blah. But it's harder because no one can relate to her. So she had to find her, her way in her way. And for me, it was like, okay, everyone's going to relate to me as a mom trying to lose the basic baby weight. So whatever that story is for you, be relatable. And trust me, once you get fit, it's a little bit harder. I remember going to teach my group fitness classes. They're like, you have no idea what I've gone through. And I'm like, Ugh. and I would just pull out my phone and show them my before picture. And they were like, Oh, you do like, so I think it's a huge advantage to not be in shape yet. <laughs> I think it's a win. But. I think, was it, was it Shanti? Somebody said something, maybe it was Tony Horton, about, like, I don't want to see your after pictures anymore. I want to see more of your before pictures. By the way, your after pictures last about as long as it takes for you to take the pictures, and then you start eating again, and the after pictures don't even look like that anymore. Yeah, which, it was Shanti at Summit. Yeah, Shanti, it was hysterical. Yeah. yeah. But they were saying, we want to see more of the before pictures because they're more relatable. And then as far as like wherever you are on your journey, there's somebody who's just a few steps behind you and who wants to be where you are. So, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've never been more than, say, 25 pounds overweight. So I really don't have people resonate with my story who have 50 pounds to lose or 100 pounds to lose. But if you're in that part of your journey where you've lost 20 pounds, but you still have 50 more to go, you're going to resonate with a different population of people who need us just as much as the skinny fat people need us. So there's a population out there who are looking for you to be an inspiration for them, for them to say, hey, that's the next step I want, I want to be at, and she can definitely help me. I, I feel like she understands where I am. She's been here, and now she's there, and that's where I want to be. Yeah, for sure. And even if you are super fit and didn't need to lose all of that, again, it's that you'll find your people. It doesn't... It, you have to get all that out of your head for sure. Erica, did you want to say something? Oh, I was just going to say, I feel the same way, but mine was more of an internal thing. So I suffered from IBS and I was like, well, how am I going to like, you know, get people to follow me? I don't have this huge transformation, but I was just putting like bits and pieces, like they say, breadcrumbing your story because it really doesn't even have to be about the physical part of it. It can be about, you know, I had more energy to run around with my kids today and people will resonate with that too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, losing the pounds is great and everything, but like, I think people want to know how you feel because everyone is exhausted nowadays. So you can share that too, I think. Yep. I know for me, I was in that boat at, when I first signed up, it was more of a discount coach, even though in the back of my head, I knew I wanted to be a coach, but I had like 50 pounds to lose. So I didn't jump right into the business. I felt like I had to focus on myself. But then once I started losing some of the weight, I slowly started to post it on Facebook. I, I was nervous about it for some reason. And usually I'm not, I really don't care what people think, but for some reason showing my before pitches was frightening. And I get it. Like people don't want to, post their before pitches but like we've all said it's people can relate to you more when you put yourself out there more so when I started to slowly share my journey is when people actually started reaching out to me and then I realized oh my gosh I need to be a coach even though I wasn't at my goal weight yet I mean I, I lost 50 pounds so I mean I did have pounds to lose but once you share your story and your journey and as you go through it people are going to relate to you more and that's why you should put yourself out there right away. I wish I did it right in the beginning. I mean, I, I was probably a month into it when I slowly started putting myself out there. But if I had done it right away, I think, you know, I would have got more people to respond to me. Awesome. All right. This is a good one. Um, and I know that every, I know that a couple of people are going to have good answers for this one. 
So none of my Facebook friends are responding to my messages. What do we say to that? Move on. Control the controllable, right? Don't say crickets. Don't say that. <laughs> ever, ever say that word, ever. <laughs> it's not allowed. Banned because of Lori Mandato. Sorry. We talk a lot about, um, you know, just you can't control what people are going to say. So the only thing you can control is talking to more people mm -hmm. is my answer on that one. But, but yeah. Yep. So. And also trust that just because they're not saying anything doesn't mean they're not watching. They are. Exactly. Consider them to be seeds planted. That's exactly what they are. If I see that they read it, I'm like, awesome, seeded. And I'm like, <laughs> it's still cool. I'm like, thank you. Thank you for reading it. Yeah. I'm going to make that thing grow eventually. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's literally no reason for you to get discouraged by people not responding to your messages. It's just, it's part of the journey. We all go through it. Like literally all of us, there's no, it's, you know, I shared with one of my new coaches today in a quick voice memo, you know, cause she says that's what's stopping her. Like nobody's responding. I'm like, that's fine. The only, you can't control, you can't control whether people are going to sign up. You can't control whether they're going to respond. You can't control when they're ready. The only thing you can control is to continue to talk to more people. So the, and one of the things when new coaches say to me, nobody's responding. I'm like, how many people is that? And usually it's like 15 to 20 total. I'm like, that's good then. Nobody should be responding around there, but if you start, you know, it's, you just have to keep going. You have to keep going. I still get, you know, I talk to probably 30 people a day from my like page and two answer me. And out of those two, two of them say no. <laughs> and then the next day I may have 30 more people and 10 respond and one say yes. Like it's just... You can, but again, seed was planted. Many of them come back, you know, months later. They just want to keep watching, which is why we say it's so important to post two to three times a day on Facebook. So I, there's so many times that I have people come to me and say, oh my gosh, my friends and family have no idea I'm a coach anymore. They went and signed up with somebody else. I'm like, yeah, because you never post. I don't even know if you're a coach anymore. You know, so if I don't know, how are your friends and family supposed to know? I don't know. If I don't know what you're doing, either do they. You have to make sure you're posting for that sense that they, because those people are going to keep watching. Well, I feel like if no one's responding, then maybe you need to revisit what you're saying too. And maybe you're coming across too salesy because I did that as a new coach. Like you just, it's a learning curve. You don't know it. And so I think it's important to just form it people and not make it feel like a sale because that's not what this is about. And sometimes, like, I'm a busy mom, so I get if other people, maybe they're in the middle of something and they look at a message and then they forget. And so if you kind of follow up on their page and like and comment something, it will trigger that memory. I'm like, oh, they, they sent me a message. So it's not all about us all the time. For sure. Yeah, I have to keep messages unread so that I don't forget, for sure. I, I can't. Exactly. And, yeah, you definitely sometimes, you know, like we've been focusing on for the past, I would say, six weeks. The messages should literally just be, how was your summer? I hope it was amazing. Do you have a vacation coming up? It's it really like you shouldn't be sending 20 messages a day to people you haven't talked to in six months asking to join your challenge group. It just shouldn't be happening. So watch that. And we talk about that in the seven day quick start group too. All right. Um, the next one is, I need daily posting ideas. I don't, I'm running out of things. So I'm supposed to post two to three times a day, but I'm running out of things to post. Um, so my advice is to, for the inspirational post, Google under images, inspirational post, and then find ones that speak to you post the image, and then share one or two sentences about why that post or that picture speaks to you. What does that mean for you? 
So people will see the picture and that definitely helps it get seen more. But then they learn something more about you when you share why that particular quote or picture resonates for you. And that might spark something in um, your story. So you might be able to share a bit of your story because you found that picture as well. And then, um, you know, for your other posts, you just make a schedule. You know, decide that every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in the morning, you're going to share. I mean, I have, I have um, reminders going off constantly on share a recipe today. Tuesday's Transformation Tuesday, so I'm going to share the Beachbody Challenge um, story. Um, share a fitness article. I, I use the Beachbody blog for almost all of this. Um, share a Shakeology recipe. And I have reminders that go off on different days of the week so that I'm consistent. Again, creating that consistency. So decide what you want to talk about and start setting reminders. You can set, you know, write posts ahead of time. You can write out a couple of paragraphs about your story and then take little snippets, two, three sentences from each one of them, um, one of those paragraphs, and use that as one of your posts. But you should never run out of something to say. I mean, and even if you think a lot of people think their life is boring like it's not like who cares like hello that's what snapchat and this instagram stories thing is all about it's literally you like holding your phone walking into the grocery store like, oh my god i snapchatted while i was rinsing my quinoa don't forget to rinse your quinoa because yeah. it keeps you from getting bitter yeah I can't believe how many, I also took that and put it in my challenge group and there were lots of, of comments on it. Yeah. Cause that shit's nasty. If you don't rinse it. You gotta yeah. People. You gotta warn people. You gotta warn people when they eat beets. You gotta warn people. When they <laughs> have asparagus. Like you gotta warn people about this stuff. People don't know. Literally well, when I had asparagus, I was Googling. I thought I had a UTI. <laughs> favorite um, kitchen gadget. What's your favorite kitchen gadget? I, I used to Google e um, either or questions. Just put in the thing in the Google search, either or questions. And it'll give you a list of either or questions or like, would you rather questions? And it just gets people talking and it gets your creative juices flowing. Yeah. Yeah. When I think of an idea of a post, I put it in my um in my notes section on my on my iPhone, and I just keep on collecting them. Yep. Yeah. And honestly, like you know, Amy posts about her puppy and her, and our dog before all the time. And Shower used to post about um you know her kids not sleeping and stuff. But apparently, they're sleeping a little better because I don't see those anymore. So they're sleeping now. Yay. But like I used to go every morning to see if Cheryl slept and I, now I see what Jinx is going to destroy each day. Amy was sewing today. <laughs> you know, like it's just whatever it is, that's, it's not boring. Like I literally look for things <coughs> like every day I look for your stuff about your life. I don't look for your fitness stuff. I look for stuff about your life more than anything. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and, and anyone, please share, like, if you, like, you know, like Amy just said, she Snapchatted about her quinoa and stuff. Like, if you have great ideas like that, that you do, like, just share it in Team Passion. Let's just have threads of ideas of what we should post about going, for sure. Um, Amy just touched upon this a little bit because she talked about having a schedule. Um, but, you know, a new coach struggling to be consistent every day. Like, so the mundane tasks of every day, posting two to three times, sending 10 messages, drinking your shake, working out, doing your personal development. Like how do you do that every single day consistently? I think you have to set a time. I mean, it's like you set a time to do your workout. Like people will get up at 5.30 in the morning to do their workout. But then sporadically throughout the day, they'll message one person, message another person here. But then by the end of the day, unless you wrote it down in the business activity tracker or use Team Z or Streak or pen and paper, it's really hard to stay focused and consistent. And for me in the beginning, I was, I was that coach. I was talking to a lot of people on Facebook, but the next week, 
those messages were all jumbled up and I do, you know, one message when I was in line at CVS and one message and it just, I felt like I was so all over the place. So having one focused power hour where you know that you're going to be home and sitting in front of your computer and not on your phone, that has helped me. And also the team Z, I have to say that's really, really been huge in the last few months. Yeah, so that is T E A M Z Y dot com for people who um, don't know. You can get a, a trial of it, but it's a it's a um, contact management type system that was developed by Beach Body Coaches for Beach Body Coaches. So um, everybody's loving it. So feel free if you're all over the place to go ahead and do that. And I think there's always a free 30 day trial, from what I can tell. Yes, there is posting. Awesome. This is a big one that I know people feel. I need to know everything before I even start sharing. Like I need to know the compensation plan. I need to know every ingredient in Shakeology. I need to know how to sign people up. I need to know every price of the challenge pack and what's in it. Like what do we, what do we say to that? How do we overcome that needing to know everything first? I get really excited about this because, um, I will tell my coaches, like, um, new people starting, this business is so much fun because it's an experiential business. You learn as you go. You grow as you learn. And that's what's so much fun about it. You don't have to. All, even though you, know, you hand them the job manual, the new, the new job manual, and it gives you step-by-step -step, um, tasks to do to train yourself and open up your business, you really don't learn what you're doing until you actually do it. Like it doesn't get in your bones. And I, this is how I explain it to them. I can tell you all day how to do a squat. I can tell you all day how to run this business. But until you actually squat, you will not understand what I'm talking about. And it's the same thing with this business. And that's what I tell my coaches always up front. Whether they hear it, remember it, I have no idea, but I do let them know that because it is a plethora of information. It's too much to take in. And if you're, you're getting ready to get ready, you'll never be ready. I'm still learning six years later. It's just like you, anytime, I always say, it's anytime you start any new job, you don't walk into day one and sit there and your boss tells you, you know, okay, go. And you're like, what? But even if they did, you would try to figure some stuff out and you would probably ask some questions because you're like, oh, shoot, I'm about to sit here for eight hours. I better figure something out, like, right? So it's that same type of thing. You're going to learn. Every time I trained people at my corporate job, I was like, please ask me a ton of questions because I'm not going to remember to tell you everything along the way. Like, so there's got to be questions that you ask and you just, you just have to do step by step and piece by piece, bit by bit. And you just have to watch what your coach is doing. Like we lead, by, I, I was talking to one of my coaches last night. Um, I forget who it was, but we were talking on chat and, um, oh my gosh, I just lost, I lost my train of thought, but I was talking about just lead, all you have to do is lead by example. Like, oh, you know, she was saying, you know, I should do this and I should, um, I think I'm going to do. I'm going to go and do this and this. And she was just naming all these things that she was going to do. And I'm like, okay, but is that duplicatable? Can you go expect your new coaches to do that? All of that. Right. So always ask yourself that question. Like whatever you're like, that's why I tell you guys, my challenge groups are so simple because everybody can duplicate them. There's nothing fancy about them. So everything that I do is very duplicatable. Like I don't do anything big and fancy and, scary that you guys are like, Ooh, I can't do that. You know, you can, cause it's just very simple and very duplicatable. So, um, we, we just keep it simple and we lead by example. Um, I'm going to skip one and then we'll end with that one. So one of them was having a follow-up system. I'm going to say that if you don't feel like you have a follow-up system and you're kind of all over the place and you're like, I don't really know who's I'm going to suggest that Teamsy and just go for it because I think that's going to be your, you know, I used to share my index card system or I would use automatic CEO or Salesforce. I think Teamsy is the new thing. 
Um, so you do have to have some sort of follow-up system, but Beachbody also has follow-up system trackers that you can print out um, that are right on the, but right in your coach online office. So even if you don't want to spend money or use a system like that, Beachbody has them under, um, you know, under my business or my news and trade. I don't know. I don't know where it is. FAQ it. Fuck it. That's our new thing. Fuck it. Instead of FAQ. Okay? <laughs> so when I, so when I type that, um, th say it, we're saying fuck it. Okay. All right. So there are plenty of follow-up systems out there for you to use pen and paper, Excel, Teams, -y, and go fuck the systems that Beachbody have for you. All right. How do we, our last one, we're going to finish this, this one because it's a big one. How do we overcome no's and rejection when all we want to do is hide under a rock and quit after our first no or after our many no's? Shake it off. Shake <laughs> it off. <laughs> I use my no's as a time to educate them. Like, I love, it's actually kind of challenging. It's fun to me when they tell me no, and I'm like, okay, well, do you mind telling me why, right? And then they'll tell me why, and then that just goes into more educating and educating and educating, and then finally they're like, okay. And they always come back, typically. But it's just, it's fun to just educate. And then the more you do that, the more confident you feel, the better you feel in your you know, your conversations with people, it just builds confidence all over. Win, win, more seeds. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest ways to get over your nose is to read and study the book, Go For No. It changes your mindset completely so that you're actually seeking no's every day when you start your business. Like that's the point of the book is for you to get more no's in the day than you've ever gotten because what a nose lead to yes. what yes <laughs> like what yeah so yeah. the more you can't get any yeses without it getting any no's and i mean me six years later 13 star two-time elite almost to making two million dollars i hear 10 or more no's every single day still and same thing Chrissy just said, like people will say to me, um, you know, some girl just said to me before I got on this call, oh, I've tried those shakes. They're disgusting and they make me nauseous. And, you know, I'm like, well, what shakes? Shakeology's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've tried every flavor and every recipe. And so I'm like, okay. I'm like, that's so weird. You know, <laughs> like I just, cause it is, that is weird. She's lying. Right. So I'm like, unless you're allergic to something, that's weird. But I didn't say that. I'm just like, okay, then let's just get you the $60 package. You know, and I'm finding that, you know, when I do that, like I had a girl today order Shakeology HD and she ordered the $60 package because she didn't have any money a week and a half ago. She only got Country Heat Base Kit. And now because she's in the group and everybody's posting about Shakeology, she spent another $170 tonight on her Shakeology HD and a Fixate cookbook. And she spent $60 10 days ago. And I'm like, all right, well, there's more commission for me. I told you so. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, it's, you just, you know, you do whatever you can, um, but you, you can't, you have to, my biggest, the biggest thing, and I'll probably, maybe I'll go find this call, is when Kim Carver did that call for us about controlling the controllable. It was a huge eye-opener for so many people. You, we are educators inspires and motivators we are not convincers it is not your job to convince or beg or be that car salesman that goes back and tries to find another number in the back with his boss what do they do back there anyway right like it's we're not those people we just have to keep educating like uh, like Chrissy said and we just you know they'll come around you have to know you have to know that the no's aren't to you one of the other big things I like to share I learned this in the other MLM years ago is you know we all did an experiment we sat in a circle and someone passed around gum would you like gum would you like gum would you you know and some people said yes and some people said no and then we said okay when the person said no to you did you take that personal that they didn't want your piece of gum 
right? Like, and you're like, no, of course not, right? So you got to think of it that same way. You're just offering them a piece of gum. And some are going to say yes, and some are going to say no. And, and, and no just means not now. And Erica typed in the comments, personal development, that is going to get you through this entire list of eight things that we just went through. Personal development is going to get you through all of them. You know, people will say to me, I need a book on, you know, how to get over nose or building my confidence or whatever. Honestly, you know, there are books specifically for that, but any book that you read that is a personal development book is going to strengthen everything in your being. Like it's, it doesn't matter. Don't stress about what book, just get the books going and read a book a month or listen, whatever you got to do. You don't have to read, you know, or listen to it on audio. Um, on that, this is something my big, I took out of, um, out of summit is one of the top coaches listens to at least five hours a day of personal development. So when she's doing her workout, she doesn't listen to the, you know, to the people she does to the trainers. She listens to personal development when she's doing dishes, when she's doing laundry, when she's in the car, you know, wherever she is, she's listening to personal development. So that's huge. It'll just, it's your answer to everything. It's always the answer. The, the two things that are always the answer, Nicole, I'm not successful in, the, in this business. You're not doing enough personal development and you're not talking to enough people. That's it. Those are the only two things you could be doing wrong. I promise you. How, how simple, think about that. Can you do more, more personal development and can you talk to more people? Those are the only two things you have to do. That's, that's all that the successful leaders in the company or team are doing more of than you. It's very, everything is fixable with those two things. Anything have, anyone have anything else to add? <laughs> when I get a no, I make sure that I don't close the door on that person. Mm. Like even when I'm in, in a chat with them, going back and forth and they're like, no, you know, I'm doing this or I'm not interested or whatever. I will even continue that conversation because I do not want the door to shut and have them feel like I don't care anymore because I've gotten a no from them. So I make certain, even more certain that the conversation continues after I get a no, even though I, I, I say to myself, okay, it's not their time. I will continue that that conversation and make sure that they go on my list of people to follow and follow up with so that, you know, it's, it's about caring about them, not, Oh, they said, no, I'm on to the next person. Yes, I am. But that doesn't close the door on that. No. Yeah. And I think that's so important to have a follow up system, um, for that, you know, because, um, Chrissy shared, uh, Chrissy's husband, Sean, shared when they were out here in, um, let me just meet, let me just meet the baby. Um, so Chrissy's husband shared when they were out here from New York, you know, he remembers, so it took me a couple years to get them on board. Um, <laughs> I was stalking Sean and Chrissy a little bit. Sean came in through Mark's account as a Beachbody customer. And, you know, he was like, you know, my girlfriend and I do this and that. And they named like every Beachbody program. And I was like, oh my God, you guys have to be coaches. And I normally don't jump to that, but you do. And he's like, oh, whatever. And we just literally, like Amy just said, we literally just kept having conversations. And I would write down stuff. And one of the things is Chrissy was moving down to um, Florida and moving in with him. And I wrote when that was happening. And so the week before the move, I sent an email. I'm like, hey, good luck on your move next weekend. And he will never forget that. Like he was like, and he's a salesman. So he's like, this girl is on. Like she knows what she is doing. Like, and it was a simple, like they were just in my box. And I just wrote a simple note. It wasn't like, you know, and I, and I cared. And I would check it. And Andrea Otley actually said to me, she's like, you know, I remember in the beginning, you just caring. You just asking about Ira and Paxton and their horses. She's like, I don't know if you give the two shits about them and their horses, but you act, you made me feel like I, I'm like, of course I did. Like, you know, but so 
those things go a long way for people. If you remember things or you don't have to remember it because that's just cuckoo, write it down, <laughs> right? So write down little things. Someone about to have a baby. I just sent two, um, two people in our challenge group just had a death in their family. I sent them um, sympathy cards. Like one of them was like, uh, that was the sweetest thing you could have ever done. You know, you don't even know me from a hole in the wall. Like it's very simple things that you can do for people so that they're always staying in your life. Um, Kareen Genova shared on the Team Passion page a little bit ago. You know how everybody, you have a birthday that comes up, someone's birthday, right? And you share, you say happy birthday that day. Well, what she does is she writes a list. And she talks to them privately the next, like, in 48 hours. And so she'll send a message asking how their birthday was and ask, you know, she'll go to their page or something. So she takes those birthdays, puts them on a list, and two days later goes in and sends a private message and asks them about their birthday. I bet nobody else, not many people are doing that to them. They're just writing on their wall because they show up, right? Everybody just goes through that motion of writing on the wall, right? I unfriend people on their birthday. That's my <laughs> people not on the team. I won't unfriend any of you on your birthday, <laughs> but that's how I've cleaned up my list. <laughs> but you know, like do something different, go against the grain, you know, just be different. Um, Crystal's asking, she went, oh, sorry, I muted her. Um, how do you add people? Just add people with mutual friends with, even if you have no idea who they are. So here's how I friend people, and then someone else can feel free to step up. I friend people that, like, so I put in my, um, in my Facebook, I fill out that entire profile. I put all my past jobs, all my past schools, like everything. I go cuckoo on that thing. And so then when you go to um, your friends list and it says, you know, find friends, you can click a box that says find friends that went to Bridgewater State University. And so I'll do that or find friends that used to work at. So I'll do that or find friends that went to Norton High School. So I did. That's how I friended everyone. I friended people based on that piece of um, things. So I don't randomly just friend people because it comes up on my suggestions. I figure out who they are. I will friend people that are in groups that I like and that comment a lot in groups, like in my hobby type groups, like, um, you know, our Disney World junkie group that we're in or like mom's groups that we're in. I'll just, if I like someone and I start interacting with them, I'll just hit a friend request. Um, but those are how I do my friend requests. Anybody else? Can you guys hear me? Yes, Lori. Right. <laughs> um, when, what I do a lot is I'll tag my husband. So like, I mean, you can't do this if you've been in it a long time because you probably know everybody. I'll tag my husband in a post. People that he went to high school with or whatever will like that post. And when they like it. <laughs> Hi, husband. <laughs> My friend. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's me. I'm helping her. <laughs> so that helps me a lot. I've gotten so many people and then I formed them a little bit and a lot of them ended up being customers of mine too. Yes. Good one. Anybody else? All right. Well, thank you guys. It's nine 45. So, um, we everyone stayed on so thank you guys so much for joining us sorry about my voice um thank you to all the leaders that spoke up and helped us with this call tonight i think this is going to be one that you're going to want to go back and listen to make sure you post the link in your team cup pages and make sure everybody listens um to this call next week's call we are going to actually talk about the leadership ladder so stay tuned for that. We're going to go over the leadership ladder, the, like the first three rungs, I think is all we need to kind of go over right now. I'm going to talk about strategies on how to move up on the rungs. So have an amazing week, guys. Thanks for joining me and talk to you soon.